Hi everyone, welcome back to Workshop. This is just a little follow-up video on the Rupert Neve 5042 tape emulator device uh, fixed to some weeks ago now. And uh, if you may remember, I'll link it down below, but uh, you may remember that uh, the DC to DC converter in that unit was actually faulty. So I just uh, replaced it with a new one and uh, uh, changed a few caps and that was that. So uh, I did say in that video, I think that I was going to try and depot the faulty um, DC to DC converter and see if I could repair it. So this is the actual data sheet for the DC to DC and you can see that it uh, it's just a metal case and uh, it's potted from the other si underside and there's five pins uh, that protrude from the potting compound. Um, so <laughs> it took quite a while, I mean that's uh, well over a month now since I published that video, maybe, maybe even more and uh, it has taken some considerable time but I think I've managed to depot it and what I used was this stuff here that I bought via eBay. Uh, I do have some stronger stuff but it's a little bit dangerous as I think I said in the last video but uh, I decided to buy this stuff here. Um, a little bit safer, resin polymer and epoxy residue remover and what I did was I decanted some of this into a glass jar, uh, a sealed glass jar popped in the DC to DC converter after removing it from its metal uh, casing that you see here and uh, just leaving it for a week, taking it out, scraping the potting compound that had managed to become soft um, because it didn't soak all the way through into the potting compound. It would just like the top two or three, well, one or two millimetres would go soft and I was able to scrape that away very easily and then pop it back in the uh, this stuff again for another week and just kept on repeating that and kept on repeating that until I managed to get all the potting compound removed. And here it is. The underside here was the first to become totally exposed. Um, I think it's probably because it was quite a bit thinner, the, the potting compound that was on there. You can see the five pins there uh, protruding from that side of the PCB. But the other side uh, took considerably longer and it wasn't until today that I just managed to finally get it all removed there and uh, expose the entirety of the PCB. It wasn't without its um, problems though. Uh, I have got one or two issues to fix before I can try powering this up again. So let's take a closer look. So the first thing you may notice is this inductor coil here. Uh, I'm basically just left with a winding and the actual uh, casing of the coil itself looks to have just totally disintegrated there. It's uh, not too sure if that's me picking away at the compound or whether it uh, had some reaction to the compound and uh, uh, managed to dis dis disintegrate, I'm not too sure. On the other side of the board, on the output side, there's actually uh, one of the diodes here. I think this is just a, a bridge rectifier circuit here uh, and it's become detached at one end. Again, not sure if that was me or part of the original fault. Don't really know. And probably the worst problem that I've got is this coil here. I've managed to snap one of the, uh, the outer windings there but very, very luckily, I can see both ends. So I think I'm going to manage to solder a, a wire between those two ends there. Luckily, it wasn't buried. I was able to pick it out uh, fairly easily. And I don't think there's anything else broken. So I'll manage to fix that. So obviously, I'm not going to power it up uh, as you see it here. I'm going to make these repairs. Uh, I'm going to leave the coil as it is because I think that might be okay. But I'm going to fix this um, break here. I'm also going to solder down that diode and then I'm going to try powering it up and see if we've got the same original fault that we had uh, when it was removed from the Rupert Neve. Right, almost ready for power up. You can see my temporary wire there. Uh, let's zoom in, let's have a little look there where I've repaired that winding. Just uh, it doesn't look very pretty, but I don't want to wiggle the uh, um, the original winding too much in case I snap it off further to uh, closer to the core. So it's just uh, doesn't look good, but it probably does the job. And I've uh, obviously resoldered the diode in place, and uh, uh, let's go for a power up. 
So I'll just zoom out a bit here. So we've got the three um, terminals at the other end, centres zero volts, and you've got plus and minus 18 um, for the output there. So I've got it hooked up off camera, uh, a 15 volt supply. So that's the power on now. And I'll just uh, probe this side here. I'm not sure if that's positive or negative. 18 volts, plus 18 volts, and this should be minus 18 volts. Look at that. Plus and minus 18 volts is working. Oh, don't get a good join there. There we go. And it seems fairly stable, but I think if you remember the Rupert Nave unit, um, what I was finding was obviously when it warmed up, it uh, tended to tended to get worse. The output would uh, jump all over the place. Sometimes going up as high as twenty six volts, down as far as fifteen or sixteen, if I remember rightly. Um, but this is a good start. This is plus eighteen on the button, minus eighteen more or less on the button. So, right, the next thing I've done is I've replaced this inductor. Um, I've sort of guessed at the size there and just something I had in stock so I've replaced it with a, a 150 micro henry inductor this one's a, a half an amp rated so it should do the job okay so um, I'll just uh, power her up again offload and uh, see what sort of output we're getting now let's see yeah we're getting the plus 18 and we're getting the minus 18 as before. So I think the next thing to do now is to put it under load and let's uh, see what we're getting. Right, I found a couple of 1 watt resistors, 270 ohm. It's going to give me about 66 milliamps per rail. And remember, according to the data sheet, uh, these rails are um, rated at about 400 milliamps. So um, we'll probably get to that, but... Uh, well, one step at a time. Now I'm not using my DC electronic load because I really want to load up both rails at the same time uh, with equal amounts of load uh, and I can't really do that on the, on the one uh, electronic load uh, so we're just going to take this old old way of doing it so uh, here we go I've got uh, two 270 ohm resistors one watt so uh, works out at just about one watt per rail so these resistors are probably going to get a little bit warm but I think that's probably enough of a load to load up the whole circuit so that I can leave it for a while and see how stable it was because like I said if you remember um, this DC to DC converter seemed to be more stable when it was first powered up and it got worse as the uh, uh, it was left on so let's uh, plug in the power so 15 volts going in and we just got just under the 18 volts on that side there and just over the 18 volts on the minus rail there so let's just leave them I'll hook up I'm gonna hook up the scope to the positive output so we can monitor that and I'll just leave it running and see what happens Okay, just before I hook the scope up, actually, I've gone and changed out the inductor. It's getting a little bit warm from a liking at half an amp rated, so I found this one. It's a little bit lower uh, in terms of inductance, but it is rated at about uh, 3 amps, so I think this one will more than cover uh, what's required there. So let me just hook the uh, scope up, and we'll take a look at the positive output. Okay, that's the scope hooked up. It's been on for about uh, five or ten minutes now. I'm on DC coupling, center zero volts, five volts per division. So you can see I'm around about the 18 volts there. And you can see there's a little bit of a noise that going on there. That's to be expected with the DC to DC converter. As you can see there's no large dropouts or wavering uh, that the uh, DC to DC converter was doing when it was... Uh, back in the Rupert Neve unit it was like varying by very slowly by a, a few volts at a time certainly not getting that even though it's under
under load at the moment so I think I'll change it to AC coupling let's take a closer look at the noise There you can see about 200 millivolts per division there and that's to be expected that's a high frequency switching noise of the DC to DC converter and it's not really changing my much at the given fixed load that is running on at the moment so that's looking pretty good um, certainly not to changing much so uh, yeah so I think I'll put it back to AC coupling get it back down to there. And back onto 5 volts per division and I'll try, I'll move it across off camera onto the negative output and you can see basically the same again, probably slightly less noise on the negative rail there um, yeah but that's about your minus 18 volts as well So with under load now for about 15 minutes the output just has not budged a single bit as you can see there oh, as you can see there I'm still running at about just under the 18 volts on the positive rail and just over the 18 volts on the negative rail but I must say it is hot it is getting real hot. I mean the incoming supply, I'm still running off of the plus 15 volt supply and it's running at about 450 milliamps there but uh, those MOSFETs or transistors are quite hot. I can hardly touch this. Even inductors hot, the coils are hot, the diodes at this side of the board are hot, everything's running hot so wow um, these uh, DC to DC, you know, like I said in the last video, that uh, the the even you can even buy an optional heat sink for them. I am not surprised. So I'm going to wind up the uh, incoming supply to 18 volts. So that is a spec. It's uh, nine to 18 volts. So I'll just go across the incoming range there. Uh, take it up to the 18 volts. And the current's dropped obviously, we're down at 350 milliamps now incoming supply and we're still at the same outputs there, no problem at all. I'll change that, I'll go down to 9 volts now and that's going to push the current right up. Nine volts in going and we're about 800 milliamps. and the outputs don't look too bad so I'll put it back to 15. So it certainly appears as though it's working obviously I, I haven't really tested it under load right across the range there I need to look um, more at the data sheet for that because I mean it just says it's uh, 416 milliamps or whatever it was per rail but it doesn't really tell you whether that's both rails at the same time etc uh, etc but um, so far it looks like it seems to be working okay. So what was wrong with it? Well, who knows? It could have been this diode here that... Uh, wow, this is hot. It could have been this diode here that had lifted and perhaps it was just making and breaking or something and was causing the problem. Um, so without pouring over the uh, all the joints in the board and giving them a little uh, touch up there, who knows. I doubt the break in the coil here was the cause of the problem. That was probably me uh, when I was uh, depotting it because I mean if I'd broken that wire I don't think the circuit would have worked at all. Certainly this coil would have been non-operational I would have thought. And uh, you know there could be a bad cap or something like that. I doubt it because like I said it seems to be working now even though it's extremely hot um, yeah so I mean I'm not going to use this unit um, I might uh, repot it in a 3d printed um, case or something like that there's just some kind of test unit or something like that in and around the workshop but uh, I'm not really going to uh, use it in anger in a, in a 
PCB or any future repair or anything like that. Uh, just really not to be trusted unless I pour over it in, in much more detail. You know, one of the reasons why I don't really want to subject it to too much more of a load is because the pot and compound that was used was actually dissipating um, a lot of the heat on especially these um, MOSFETs here, or is that a diode? Not too sure. Uh, no, there'll be MOSFETs. Um, would have, the pot and compound would have been helping dissipate the heat and acting as a heat sink on its own. So I would really don't want to push the DC to DC to the limit uh, of its output capability without some kind of heat sink. So maybe if I repot it again, some 3D printed case, I would be able to uh, uh, give it much more of a load and test it right across its range. But certainly um, even off load in that previous video, the output was jumping all over the place as it warmed up. And uh, that's certainly not the case now, so it does look like it's uh, it's working now. So I think maybe I'll uh, pot it in uh, a 3D printed case and just keep it lying around the workshop as a, a, a test unit for something. I certainly wouldn't use it in a, a future repair or any of any Rupert Neve product or anything like that. It's uh, really not to be trusted and unless I went, really went over the circuit and made sure there was no dry joints and... Uh, and all that but uh, really it's just a, a fun little follow-up to the last video thanks for watching